Do I really need this? Is this just another pink? My fear of missing out made me ask these questions when the new Tim Holtz Kitsch Flamingo came out. I mean, who doesn't love Tim Holtz? I love Tim Holtz. She loves Tim Holtz. He loves Tim Holtz. Everybody loves Tim Holtz. But is the fear of missing out just feeds another one of my crafty addictions? And here is a secret. I am not a pink person, yet I went and bought it. Why, you may ask? For two reasons. One, because I am a crafter just like you. And like I said before, I have major FOMO. But the second and more important reason is that I bought it to create a video tutorials just for you, so I can show you some amazing ways to combine it with older distress colors. And I will even show you a short and simple step-by-step -step tutorial with my favorite combination. But first, let's start with a comparison chart using Distress Oxide inks. I gathered seven pink shades of colors, starting with the lightest ones, Tattered Rose, Spun Sugar, and Victorian Velvet. Then I moved along the chart with Worn Lipstick, Kitsch Flamingo, and Picked Raspberries. Kitsch Flamingo fits right in between those two pink shades. The last one is Festive Berries, and it's more of a pinkish red. I included it as well, even though it's more on the reddish side. The first color combination is pink, yellow, and orange. When I think of this combination, it reminds me of eating a popsicle when I was a kid or sitting on a beautiful beach drinking a refreshing pink lemonade topped with a slice of orange while watching a beautiful sunset. Sometimes we only need to look onto nature to find beautiful combinations for our artwork. And this combination has always looked beautiful to me because it evokes happy memories. The second combination is pink, blue, and purple. This combination was one of my favorite ones when I was growing up. If you look at all the doodles I used to make on my notebooks, I often use this color combo. It reminds me of mermaid tails, unicorns, and fairies. No matter what shades of blues, purples, or pinks, they always look so good together. I even tried it with some turquoise. For the third combination, I will combine pink, gray, and black, as I always find this one so classy. To create this distressed background, I first ink my mat with gray. I spray water on it and then smoosh my papers onto it. I dry it a bit and then repeat the same process using the pink and finally the black. As a teenager, I loved this combination as it felt all grown up. And even though it was pink, combining it with gray or black always felt sophisticated to me. This background reminds me of pink smoke or a foreign planet in the universe. I truly love how it turned out. For my fourth background, not only will I show you my favorite combination, but I will also complete a project, as I really want to show you more than just making backgrounds. For this combo, I will use Kitsch Flamingo Speckled Eggs, which are two of the new Distress colors, combining it with a classic one vintage photo. So the combination will be pink, blue, and brown. For the background, I'm doing a similar technique to the one I just did before. But since I'm working inside a bound journal, I don't want to flip it onto my mat. So instead, I took a small piece of acetate and sprayed it with Kitsch Flamingo Pink. Then smooshed it onto my page in different areas. I dried the background, cleaned my acetate, and then I took the speckled egg blue and did the same thing. Sprayed it on the acetate and smooshed it onto the background. If you don't have oxide sprays, you can use the inks instead, like I did with the vintage photo. I inked the acetate, sprayed it with water, and then smooshed it onto the background. Once all three colors were dried, I added some texture by inking a design through a stencil using the vintage photo color and stamping a faux stitched border with Tim Holtz stitches stamp. I just love how the stamp looks as it gives me the sewn look without sewing. To add a focal point, I die cut a dragonfly and the word artist out of two Tim Holtz old dies. I spray them with the same colors I had used, although I used more blue on the dragonfly and more pink on the title. I ended up cutting the word artist to spell art and even stamp some stitches on them. 
So to answer my own questions from the beginning, I have to say that I was truly pleasantly surprised with this shade of pink, especially with these amazing combinations. But more importantly, it's really helpful to know what colors combine well with others. Because the more familiar you are with color combinations, the more comfortable you will feel creating. I even have another video right here where you can learn how to combine blue in five amazing color combinations. Click this video right here to get you started.